he did things to me like that. He would show up and he'd ask me to ask him something. Because the, tra listen, are you ready? This is the secret to prayer. God will hijack you to pray certain things so that he can do them. And, and you, you think you understood faith. And what, what the Lord will do is that chessboard that you developed of like all your techniques about, about faith and how to get your prayers answered, he's going to take that chessboard and just uh, push it away. And he's going to say, I want you to feed the poor. I, I want you to sit with people and let them talk and you don't say anything. Let them cry. Let them let them share their hearts. And um, that's what Jesus, ta how he taught me. But I didn't have to go through things if I would have listened. And um, that's what the Spirit of the Lord is saying, is that he dwells in eternity, and he's the high and lofty one, but he also dwells with those who are humble and contrite in spirit. So you have to be willing to let God come in and mess up everything. You have to be willing that, like, we're not going to do this. Now, I'm not talking about the Word of God, whatever he's spoken. What I'm talking to you about is you. You sitting in your house, and God comes to your house and visits you, comes to your town, comes to your church. He invades your space. And how are you going to deal with that? Because the, religious, the religiousness of people, if you want to call it a religious spirit, whatever you want to call it, it's not really revealed. Everything's fine until Jesus shows up. So we can sit here and be frustrated like we are, or we can let God come into our house, into our lives, and then we go to church with, with something to give out. We, we, we enter into our community, into our job, into everything with value. And we, we, just, we just come to give. And God provides seed for the sower. So when we pray, it shouldn't be like, a, I'm going to try this. It should be like, you know, I'm a child of God, and I'm being led by the Spirit, and I'm going to pray what the Spirit's praying, and it's all, it's all rigged. God's going to give us a way to manifest His will. It's going to be by the Spirit. We're not going to finish in the flesh. We're not going to start in the flesh. We're going we're gonna to do it right, or we're not going to do it at all. This is chapter 1 of Ephesians. May God himself, the heavenly Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, release grace over you and impart total well-being into your lives. So he's blessing them. But he's powerful, okay? Then he says, every spiritual, now listen, every spiritual blessing in verse 3, it says every, every. Paul is saying to the body, every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm, in the other realm, has already been lavished upon us. And it's already been lavished on us as a gift of love from our wonderful Heavenly Father, that Lord, the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, all because, all because, this is why, all because He sees us wrapped up into Christ. This is why we celebrate Him in our hearts. Okay, now He gets really deep. Now, this is why I'm teaching on prayer from this angle, is because people need to know their value, and then they approach God a whole different way. Verse 4 says, he chose us. He chose us. That, that sounds like what Jesus said. I chose you. You didn't choose me. As his very own joining, joining, that means connecting us together to himself even before, even before he laid the foundation of the universe. Okay, this is the thing that joined me to him was my conversation was is that he valued me and, and he he created loyalty in me through his valuing me. And he showed me that I was an integral part of everything that was going on. But Jesus valued me that way. He, 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 he told me what he did for me. How he, he said, I suffered and died for you. He said, I hung on the cross for you. I went to hell for you. I was rose, raised from the dead and I grabbed you when I went up and I took you with me, and I sat you beside me. Amen. And he took me there, and he let me sit with him. And he's in tears. He's saying, I, I love you, but I showed you my love. I showed, I bought the world back for my father. 
he wanted his family back. And he, he went through this whole thing with me and he convinced me and I'm loyal to him because of that, because he first loved me. You wanna get into the deep things of prayer. Yes. The deep things of prayer are as you sit, you sit with, with the Holy Spirit, you sit with the Lord and let him visit with you and you let him talk and you let him share his heart with you and you find out what it is that he desires and then you ask for that. So all of us have the same calling and election. All of us do. And this is how Paul preached it. It was always his perfect plan, it says in um, verse five. And it says, it was always his perfect plan to adopt us. He adopts us as his delightful children through our union with Jesus, the anointed one, so that his tremendous love that cascades over us would glorify his grace, not your works, his grace. For the same love he had for the, his beloved one, Jesus, he has for us. Can you imagine? He loves us just as much as he loves Jesus. Jesus said that in John 17. Okay, and he, the unfolding plan br brings him great pleasure. So now we've been joined with Christ. We have been given the treasures of redemption by his blood, the total cancellation of our sins, total cancellation, all because of his cascading riches of his grace. This superabundant grace is already powerfully, powerfully working in us. It's already working in us powerfully through the resurrection, releasing within us all forms, releasing in, a, in us. He's talking to the church, not to Brother Hagen or Kevin or you, just one individual. He's talking to the body. He's saying it's already in us and it's powerfully working in us, releasing within us all forms of wisdom and practical understanding. And through the revelation of the anointed one, he unveiled his secret desires to us. For God intended that your faith not be established on man's wisdom, but on trusting in his almighty power. That's what Paul said. I know what God wants to hear from you. He wants you to tell him what you can't do and say congratulations, because we're gonna do that together. See, but he doesn't want you to complain about, I can't seem to do this and I'm failing at this. He's not, I'm not talking about that. What he wants to hear is he wants to hear the impossible being spoken because that's what he wants to do. He doesn't want to do something that you can do. So the only way to, to, to go from where you're at tonight into prayer conquests where you actually get everything you pray is you have to think about what the Spirit's saying right now, what he said through Paul. He's gonna do exceedingly above what you can ask or think. Okay, so that means anything, anything you say or think is not it. It's exceedingly above what you can ask or think. Okay, so anything you could ask or anything you can think, that's not it. See, now that's when the religious spirit starts to leave. <laughs> He's not interested in what you can do. So your weaknesses are translated into strengths by his power. This is the secret about prayer that I, I found. It's not what I know. It's what I don't know that he knows. It's about listening to him and saying, listen, what are we going to do today <laughs> together? He did things to me like that. He would show up and he'd ask me to ask him something. Because the, tra listen, are you ready? This is the secret to prayer. A transaction had to happen in order for the process to start. I had to initiate the transaction. He was coaching me, but he needed me as the authority on the earth because we are the authority on the earth. We have the keys. He needed me to initiate it. That's why we don't see answers to prayers. We don't understand the relationship we have, okay? So that's why you have to do things in the spirit. When you, when you pray, keep the mindset that this is not your gig. Yes. This is gonna be dictated by what the spirit says. And he knows how to do it. And with the people he's gonna deal with, he understands. Okay, but God knows how to deal with each one of us. So what is it, what is it that's in your heart. You gotta look in your heart deep. Now all your hearts are on fire. It's because the spirit inside of you is witnessing to the word of God that Paul preached. I'm just repeating it. But all of you, 
There's packages that must be opened inside of you. They mu it must be made manifest. And God is saying, listen, it's time now. Be released. Be released into what I have for you.